Hello everybody and welcome to episode number 3 of Darts Around the Globe. I'm your host Pim Huberts and today we are moving from Iran a little bit more to the east. We are going to India. We will talk about India with the best player from his country and a two-time world championship participant. It is Nitin Kumar. Hi everyone, I'm Nitin Kumar and this is Darts Around the Globe. Welcome to our podcast. Hey, thanks a lot, Ben. Thanks a lot. It's uh, it's great to actually be here. Thank you very much. Yeah, how, how are you doing in this uh, in this crisis? Playing any online darts or how do you practice? Uh, yeah, uh, quite a bit of practice actually. Lots of alone time and uh, just I got a little uh, late onto the online dart scene, uh, but it's it's been going on for the last say 15, 20 days actually. I've been playing a couple of online tournaments. It's pretty nice actually. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, sounds uh, perfect to me. Let's start um, um, in India. I know you live now in Dubai, United yeah. Arabic Emirates, but let's start in India where, well, where you started playing darts. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. How did you start playing darts? Uh, actually, well, I did my schooling in Dubai. My mom and my dad used to work here. So uh, when they were, when I was quite young, uh, my mom and dad used to love the, love the weekends and they used to actually play cards quite a bit over the weekends with friends. So uh, just over one of those weekends, a new family friend kind of appeared in our lives who actually played darts. Uh, we went uh, to his house for, I think, a weekend of rummy and blackjack and stuff like that. And uh, all of us were very young. So uh, I just was running around the house, saw a set of... Uh, darts and an actual real dart board and just started throwing the darts on the wall and the door so mm-hmm. he kind of got kind of angry and uh, taught me how to actually play the game at that time he taught my mom and my dad i was way too young to uh, i was way too young to be throwing darts i think i was maybe nine ten years old um so uh, my mom and my dad got into it um and uh, i think in another three four years i uh, i'd keep uh, throwing the darts. I mean, me and my brother were dangerous at that time. Whenever we fought together, whatever was there next to us, it's going to hit the other person's head. That's how bad we were. Mm-hmm. So darts was a big no-no for me. So under my parents' supervision, only then could I actually touch the darts. So, and um, I just keep practicing with them. That's it. Yeah. And at what moment did it become more serious? Like, how was your first tournament? Uh, my first, uh, weirdly, to... Uh, um, uh, it, it's around the same time, actually, when I just started playing darts. Uh, my first tournament was a comfort in darts, league, darts tournament in Dubai. And I was 14 years old. Uh, it was uh, it was over a weekend. My dad was uh, unfortunately kind of sick. He had to have an open heart surgery. So he was in India. And uh, my mom was here. And over the weekend, there was a tournament. My mom used to play in the league. So... She actually said she wanted to be part of it. However, she was going alone and she didn't feel safe. So she actually told me to tag along and she told me to get my darts and she said, I'll give, I'll put in your entry and you play the tournament. And well, I, I was lucky enough to have just won that. That, that. So it's a very funny story. I actually won that tournament. And since then, darts has been uh, a huge part of my life. Wow, that's a, that's a great story. So at that moment, winning that tournament, you knew... Um, I want to continue throwing the darts. Honestly, I, I was just happy just to get into bars, you know, because I was 14 years old. I was like, wow, I can actually go <laughs> go to pubs. Uh, but yeah, till, till I was uh, 21, it was an issue because I'm not allowed in pubs. So we would always have to have separate uh, special permission from the ministry over here uh, and even the bar also. And my parents had to actually provide uh, documentation that this kid would actually be in the bar premises and he would only have a Pepsi or a Coke and stuff like that. So it was quite hard actually for me to play in most of these tournaments. Um, and so if I understand it correctly, most of your yeah. uh, time you start playing darts was in Dubai? Yeah, it, it was in Dubai, yes. And uh, I, I moved to India when I was 18 because uh, well, I went over there for university. Mm-hmm. Um, I, w- I was a heavy... Uh, pretty fanatic about basketball so I used to play a lot of basketball at that time and that's how I got my scholarship in India also I was there on a sports scholarship wow. and I honestly thought that uh, I honestly thought that uh, darts in India was non-existent uh, at that time um, 
just like how we have facebook and all now at that time you used to have orkut which was a social networking website mm-hmm. and uh, on orkut uh, just randomly i found uh, a post that talked about national darts championship and it was organized by the ida which is all india darts association so i just thought hey you know what darts in india is actually there let me just go and see what this is all about and that's how i attended it i think i was 19 at the time and mm-hmm. i attended my first tournament in india and how did it go your first tournament uh, i lost uh, I, i lost in the quarter finals to the eventual champion his name was ashwak uh, ashwak said and mm-hmm. uh, well it was it was sort of weird because uh, i hadn't practiced at all uh, i didn't even carry my darts to india because the one the only darts i ever played was in dubai so i literally just went over there uh, borrowed some darts from someone who had an extra pair and i just played wow again a great story also losing to your later on uh a uh, couple partner in the world cup of darts i assume after you moved from dubai to india that tournament was also um again a confirmation for you that you knew that you that you could play darts that you had the level that was needed to make success uh yes actually i i um even when i was in dubai i used to always get uh, pushed by a uh, lots of players uh, who used to be oh yeah there, there were people when i was 15 and 16 who used to tell me you know what this guy should actually go and play the youth world championships and stuff like that and i was like you know what i don't care about that i just want to play computer games at that time you know and uh, i just wanted to play with my friends i wanted to meet girls and that that's all it was at that time i wasn't actually serious about it and uh, it's only when i actually came to university and i made the first uh, asia pacific team for india with the wdf and then i uh, went for went to the 2011 world cup in ireland and uh, that's actually when i started taking it a little more seriously i started moving away from basketball and started getting into darts yeah you i mean you're one of the tallest darts players in the scene so it doesn't surprise me that you're also a, a basketball player at that time you get that yeah. you got that scholarship in india to play basketball um was it difficult to combine the two sports uh it was d- initially it was very easy because um i i in my head there was no darts in india so i was like you know what okay now uh, darts will only be there when i come back to dubai on my semester breaks and uh, till then it's just not that not part of my life so my first year also in india was nothing else but just basketball no darts at all and only then when i found out that there was darts in india that uh, well i could actually get my darts back from dubai and start practicing mm, yeah. yeah there were a lot of hindrances uh, to that also, as well because i stay in the hostel in india and uh, due to safety uh, reasons we couldn't actually put dart balls there and I, they used to always check me whether i'll be carrying my darts inside because it can be used as a weapon and stuff mm-hmm. so practice also was a huge headache uh, couldn't do much of that so but i had to keep going for tournaments so uh, if there was a major university tournament i'll have to go for that if uh, if it was something that i needed to actually do and i can go for a big darts tournament i'd do for that i'd go for that so it used to be me basically buttering up my coaches and my physical director and telling them hey you know what mm-hmm. i'm playing for india now can you please you know cut me some slack i can't come for practice next week because i got to go for this tournament and stuff like that and they were very helpful they didn't have any issue at all with it well uh, that that's great um you already said it before in this conversation 2006 you participated at the wf asia pacific cup and then 2011 at the world yeah. cup in uh, ireland um yeah if you look at the space between that 2011 wf world cup and the 2019 pdc world championship what happened in the time between those world championship eventually uh oh there's there's been a lot of things that happened <laughs> uh <laughs> lots of things actually um improving myself as a darts player that was the main thing because uh we even though i would always look at pdc tournaments uh we never actually took part in pdc tournaments we would look at pdc players and at that time it was adrian lewis and i mean mikey van gogh was in even on the scene of course there there were there were people talking about hey this young kid who's thrashing people and stuff like that but uh, it was mainly Aiden Lewis who was the world champ at that time and Phil Taylor was there James Wade was on top of his game Simon Whitlock was on top so uh, a lot has changed actually since then till 2019 uh, 
um, it's it's gotten a lot more younger uh, just because uh, the PDC has opened their doors and all, and there's a lot more uh, young people actually taking it up. It's it's just uh, because of the money also that's involved. In us. Lots of people actually are willing to take that risk to actually, you know what? Hey, you know, I think this is worth it if I actually put in my time. In, in 2019, you were the first player from India on the PDC World Championship. Was there any reaction on that in your country? Uh, apart from people who actually played darts, I don't think anyone uh, in India knew that uh, an Indian was part of the World Championships. No. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's how it is, actually. <laughs> um, well, let's go to uh, this year's uh, World Championship then. Um, well, l- last year you uh, lost against uh, Jeffrey de Zwaan from the Netherlands. This year you yeah. played a well, a really good game against Brandon Dolan. Yeah, how are you looking back at that experience? Uh, it's uh, the first the first time against Jeffrey Desmond was just me trying to be there and trying to learn as much as I could. Um, mentally, I was nowhere close to where I had to be when I was there on that on that stage. The second time, I was a lot more prepared. I sort of knew what I had to do, and uh, well. Brendan Dolan, uh, full credit to him. All he beat me on was experience. I I didn't score well enough, and all he all he knew was I just had to get a hundred or outscore the guy so I could beat him. Uh, he got his finishes at the crucial moments. Uh, that that's it. However, the person who's going to win is always the person who's going to play better in those crucial moments, and he did that. So mm-hmm. full credit to him. Yeah, and another tournament that is really big for global darts is the pdc world cup of darts um there's only been one team from india in 2015 uh yeah do you think there will be a world cup of darts team from india again soon uh uh, no but um i play there were two teams actually i played once with ashwak and once with uh, amit gilitwala the year before that 2014 Uh, yeah of course Uh, uh, with amit i lost i think to um to belgium while with Ashwak, it was against uh, Germany. Um, the, the thing actually is, uh, I, definitely I do hope that India gets another slot in the World Cup. I think we are a little more, at least I know I am a little more mentally ready to go through that again. Mm-hmm. Uh, the problem is that uh, India itself, um, with the darts players that are there, we don't have anyone else who's actually playing that much in the global scene who has that much of experience and who can actually handle that. And uh, that's unfortunate. That's an unfortunate thing. But uh, we yeah. do have a lot more players, a lot more better players. India has so many people. Why isn't there another uh, talented darts player over there? Do you know the reason? Uh, I, I think it has to do with uh, India culturally itself. Um, there were there is, a, there is a beer brand actually called Hayward's 5000. Uh, Haywards basically, and uh, many years ago, uh, they did an advertisement that was really good for their brand. Actually, it boosted their sales. However, it uh, got into everyone's heads that uh, darts means alcohol, darts means gambling, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, uh, in a country where you know parents really, really uh, do a good number on their kids, saying that you know what, you got to study, you got to complete university, you got to get a good jobs and stuff like that, darts isn't looked. Uh, looked at in a great way actually even though i honestly feel darts is wonderful for a maybe young kid uh, young adult growing up there's so many different benefits to it whether it's mentally psychologically you know um i think it's a little hard as of now to just pierce through that stigma that is there in india right now yeah to- talking about the dart scene in india um yeah i have talked to other people from other countries, Devon Peterson, South Africa, and Moskan Ramani from Iran, and both say that it's not really the bars that they play, but it's more the sports clubs. Um, is yes. it in, is it in India? Um, yeah, how is it in India? Is it just like in England and the Netherlands where it's the bars you have to go to play? Or no, uh, actually, the the, uh, that's the thing. It, it is the clubs in India uh, right now. I think by far the hotbed for darts in India is Kolkata. And um, many years back under British rule as well, Kolkata was, uh, I would say, maybe the capital of uh, their rule in that time. 
Uh, there are a lot of clubs that date back to 1700s and 1800s. And uh, in those clubs, um, darts is it's an extracurricular activity. So you have a darts team, you'd have a cricket team, you have, you'd have a football team, you'd have a tennis team, you know. So darts is just one of those teams. And because of that, you have at least close to a thousand plus players just in Kolkata only. And these are people who just take part in darts as an extracurricular activity. So they aren't very serious players. They are, as you know, most of us call club players or social social players. Uh, you have a lot more serious players also in Kolkata. Uh, while, uh, but in Kolkata, that's the advantage. You know, you have clubs over there so people can actually play. However, in most of the other places in India, you literally have to go to a pub that has a dart board. And in India, every square foot is uh, measured for money. Uh, most uh, owners over there would actually ask you in this 10 square feet or whatever where you have a dark board, is that going to generate me as much money as having two tables here? Mm-hmm. And that's something that's quite hard actually to convince them. Uh, that's one of the reasons, of course, why darts also is not doing that great outside. Uh, yeah, talking about darts in Kolkata, I think there in that city there was the uh, Indian National Championship organized, right? Is that a big tournament in yes. India? Uh, it, it, yes, it, it, uh, I, it's the only tournament actually that happens consistently in India. The Bengal Rowing Club, which is the BRC Championships mm-hmm. in India, uh, it is held in Kolkata and they hold, held it for seven years. Unfortunately, this year, of course, it's uh, because of the COVID-19 uh, crisis, uh, crisis, it hasn't happened. But uh, it's the only tournament that's been held uh, consistently and with such rigor. Um, even though it isn't technically the national championships, it's treated as the national championships because this is the only tournament where all the best players from India actually come and take part. Um, yeah, another t- tournament that is, I guess, more recently is the BRC Darts Tournament. Yes, yes, that's the one. Um, yeah, it's, it's, we, we saw, for example, Russ Bray, I saw um, yes. being the master caller over there. Uh, Robbie, yes. Robbie Modra from Australia also being there. Is this a good example of that the darts is at least growing a little bit in India? It definitely is growing. Uh, it's growing quite a bit, actually. The thing is, uh, with India, um, most players, I would say 99% of players do not play internationally. And uh, because of that, they honestly have no clue other than looking, uh, I mean, seeing a PDC tournament tournament online and seeing how players play. They have no clue as to how darts is played outside. And uh, just because of that, it's very easy to actually steer their minds and uh, tell them that, hey, you know what, this is how things are supposed to be done. Going back to your career more, um, last year you played, for example, Q School, you played the Asian Tour. Um, We see more and more of you on the PEC Tour. Are you planning to just go play even more? On the PDC uh, tour? Yes, yes, definitely. I do want to play as many tournaments as I can because um, right after the World Championships, I realized that I just I just need to get a little more consistent. And uh, you know, I sort of uh, had an idea as to how I'm supposed to get ready and you know play before a game, get ready um, mentally and all that stuff. And uh, now it's all about me getting to practice and play against better players. And uh, unfortunately, that's one of the main reasons why I had to move out of India and come back to Dubai to work. Um, well, at the end of the day, you can keep practicing yourself alone. I mean, you can do that all you want, but uh, for match practice, you need to play someone who's better than you. And I wasn't getting that in India, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Yeah, playing on the Asian Tour, did that work for you? Did you get more experience of that? Definitely, yes. I mean, uh, love playing on the Asian Tour. There are lots of uh, really, really, really good players here. Uh, Lauren Silagan, Sego Asada, of course, Paul Lim, mm-hmm. Noel Malik Lim, so many guys, uh, Royd and Lamb as well. There are lots of players who are really world standard, who I honestly think if they had little more chances to play internationally on the PDC world stage, with a little more experience, I think they'll be able to take on a lot of the best players. Uh, but, I mean, that's how it is, you know. Uh, you're in a different place, it's a lot more harder for you to go there. Mm. Playing with them, playing against them, it really helped me. It got me a lot more uh, confidence, actually, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, your best result is in uh, Event 9. You got into the last 16. You 
played against, well, what you say, many, many well-known good players. Um, yeah, talking about darts in India again, do you think it's time, uh, maybe like in five years, maybe longer, uh, do you think it's time for an Asian tour in India? Uh, it definitely should happen. Uh, I think uh, as of now, looking at how it is, considering the amount of people that are not playing internationally, I think the only way in which Indian darts can improve now is if you get international players to them. It's uh, it's unfortunate and it's one of the last options you'll have to do, but if it's something that you can, definitely. I think it'll really help Indian darts. And uh, I think uh, you have so many players over there who have the potential to get better, but uh, eventually they will have to look at you know what family tells them. Do they have to work? Do they have to continue in their dad's businesses? Do they have to study more? And all that actually affects your darts. They can't make a decision for themselves. Um, yeah, talking about darts in the neighboring countries. Um, well, we have seen darts in Pakistan and Nepal. Um, is it a little bit the same story as in India that darts is growing, but yeah, there still need to be a lot of development going on? Uh, yes, that uh, honestly, I have not been in uh, a lot of touch with the neighboring countries, uh, but just looking at them, you know, seeing uh, what they do on Facebook and all that, definitely there are tournaments going on. Little more uh, development, of course, is required, and I think uh, uh, they sort of they sort of maybe a stage right behind India where they need to consistently now send in players internationally so they can get some more experience. And uh, that I haven't unfortunately seen a lot from them, but I'm sure in the next few years they, they will start coming out because I have heard there are quite a few good players in most of these countries as well. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, let's uh, let's hope so. Um, yeah, we already stated it before. You're living now in Dubai. How is darts in the United Arab Emirates different than in India? Uh, much more different over here. It's uh, over here, of course. We only play in pubs, mm -hmm. and uh, there are a lot of expat players, and most of them really, really good players. All of, uh, it's dominated by the Filipino players, of course. Uh, who many of them are actually ex-national players who have played for Philippines before and uh, many of them are really good. Uh, so the standard is a lot uh, better than India. That uh, I have no regret in saying it all. And uh, you have tournaments literally every week. You have a match every week. Every two weeks you have something going on. Well, unfortunately in India that was uh, something that uh, let down uh, most players actually from the national federations. Uh, we have maybe a tournament just once every year, and uh, that's some that's something that never lets the players improve. Yeah, you started to play darts uh, in Dubai. You're living now in Dubai. Um, yes. Have you have you ever thought about representing UAE instead of India? Uh, well, of course. I mean, it's it's then it's the these are just crazy ideas that sometimes come to me. You know, why don't I actually represent the UAE? Uh, it's, uh, it's it's just there in my head. I mean, there, there can be a lot of benefits to actually doing that. However, there's something that you know says your your home is where your heart is. So mm -hmm. India has has always been there. And that's the country that I would always like to represent. Sounds uh, sounds perfect. Um, well, thank you, Nitin Kumar, for, for joining us and telling more about darts in India and in Dubai. And uh, we'll hopefully see a lot from you in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prem. Thank you very much for having me.